Welcome to A Deadly Silence. I'm your host, Larry Curtis, and it's the goal of all of us associated with this program to bring you current and educational information associated with the drug and alcohol addiction that is surrounding our city of Brockton as well as our South Shore communities. Today, our, host, our guest is Lois Berman. Lois is the host of The Psychic Mind here in Brockton Cable Access as well as uh, some education background in the nursing field as well. Lois, welcome to our program. Well, thank you. Thank so, you very much for inviting me. And uh, I am honored that um, I am here today. And, and let me say that what a great job you and your staff are doing with this program. Thank you. Um, I'd like, no, I'd like to thank you for doing that. And I also want you to know in my own knowledge of energy about doing cable, you are reaching more people than you think. And there's somebody listening tonight especially that is looking for an answer, looking for uh, a new journey, and there's no doubt in my mind that the conversations that you have with this program and your guests, you know, people are hearing you and they're being touched by it. Well, that, thank you. That means an awful lot to all of us that work hard behind the scenes to, to bring this program forward. And, you know, we always wonder, do we really touch somebody? Yeah, and you we, do. And we know it only takes one person to have a change happen that makes it all beneficial and worthwhile right. for all of us here. Absolutely. You know? It's like that pebble across the, you know, across the river. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think you're doing more than you think. And I think that actually people should be a little bit more grateful that you're doing it. Well, we, uh, we get a lot of feedback, you know, from individuals who have an opportunity to catch our show and uh, who, you know, become knowledgeable as I think we've appeared, uh, Lois, uh, Pe Peggy was on your show, I believe, right. with Jackie Bonarigo, one of our other co-producers here, you know, so that's how we kind of help spread the word and get some more knowledge out there. But, you know, this whole addiction issue is a real serious issue, uh, as we've seen in the enterprise, you know, through its, you know, uh, ongoing series of, you know, a wasted youth, you know, all the tragedy that's happening out there, you know. And, um, you know, maybe with some of your experiences, maybe we can kind of spin it a different way. You know, too often we look at the negativity of the addiction issue the impact it has not only on the addict, but the family and the loved ones and things of that nature. So what is your take in relationship to this addiction uh, crisis that we're looking at? Let's talk a little bit about addiction, or let's talk a little bit about the brain. And uh, many years ago, I had a client who had an addiction problem, and she was addicted to ice cubes. Not a drug, mm -hmm. but an ice cube. And if she didn't have that ice cube, she would panic. She couldn't function. And she would really um, cause harm to herself. Mm -hmm. And so you think of the drug addict as the heroin and um, crack cocaine. Well, but the alcoholic. Uh, absolutely. You know, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But let's look a little bit about how the brain works. And there are many circuits keeping it simple mm -hmm. it's a very complex right. thing i'm not a scientist mm -hmm. i am not an expert but when you take the brain and you look at it it has all kinds of circuits mm -hmm. you know that electricity um if you've had some sort of epilepsy or if you've had some sort of brain trauma they put these electrodes and they measure the waves of your yep. brain mm -hmm. that's all in circuits and if you investigated the brain, which apparently they are getting more into, there is a closed, to keep it simple, a closed circuit mm -hmm. that maybe might open and close periodically, that is wide open or that is never open. And in that circuit, you have information that teaches you how to cope. So addiction is the inability, if there's such a word, okay, the, um, the lack of knowledge 
of coping. You know, doctors and nurses, firemen, MD, you know, EMTs, they have an ability to be able to function under stress. Mm -hmm. Maybe later they'll get a cup of coffee, but in that moment, their brain is focused, you know, do this, do this, do that. Then there are some people who panic, or there are some people that can't stop and think. So the addict has a misfiring, mm -hmm. and I like to talk about people who have past lives. I believe that we've been here before. And things that we have done or not done in a past lifetime get carried over to another lifetime. And so sometimes you could have a drug addiction in another lifetime or a closed circuit. Mm -hmm. And when you come into this lifetime, you choose your parents, you choose your friends, you choose your journey to learn the higher purpose of what it is that you need to accomplish in each lifetime. That is why some people can recover because they came to do that and they chose people to help them do that. There are some people that need to learn trust, patience. There's always some major um, life skill that comes along with some kind of issue, whether it's addiction or something else. Okay, what is your purpose? What, what are you here to learn? And I think that some people take a higher cause, like you. Mm -hmm. um, we're not getting personal on this program. No, but that's fine. But you are here because you chose to have an experience with your family in this lifetime that brought you to do this program. You mm -hmm. might have had a past lifetime as an addicted person, and nobody rescued you. Now, let me kind of twist that a little bit. Yeah. Is, that, is it not possible then that I may be sitting here because somebody else chose something, and I've chosen to respond in, 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 in the face of that their decision? Absolutely. You know. So yeah. you are learning about rescuing others. Mm -hmm because no one rescued you. You have someone in your lifetime that looks to you to be rescued. Mm -hmm. Now, here is the issue. We as the public, we as parents and friends, have to learn the appropriate way to rescue people that are asking for help. The enablers... So the addict... The, the addict... The addict in essence, is crying for help. That's right. By their involvement in the by drug or the alcohol. Right. Uh, by their behavior. Or the addiction. It, it could be any type of an addiction. That's as you right. Pointed so let's not talk uh, yeah. about an addiction. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about how people learn about behaving. Mm -hmm. And so this person, and what we need to learn is that I cannot, as they say, take you to a rehab or take you wherever you need to go, okay, as a rescuer, mm -hmm. I have to say to you as a rescuer, I can help you, but this is the way I can help you to help yourself. Mm -hmm. You need to go and find out what it is that you need about rescuing yourself. It's all about choice. It's all about responsibility. And the way the mind works when we are developing, um, you know, I'm a little chubbette myself, and I'm always working on that. I have a food addiction, mm -hmm. and, and I love my carbs. I'm follically challenged. Okay, there you go. <laughs> and I can remember, as a, I think I was probably three years old, I was a thin child. Yep. And in those days... You took out your adenoids and your tonsils. Mm -hmm. And the day I had my, adeno, my adenoids and my tonsils out, I was sitting in my grandmother's kitchen. You know, the whole family's all there, and my mother's there. And she gave me a piece of cantaloupe. And I ate the cantaloupe, and she said to me, Oh, I love you, Lois. In my mind, I think if I keep eating, my mother's just going to love, love me. me. <laughs> and 
you would think at this age, as a, an older adult, I would get that. And it was, I believe this is so true, about three or four uh, years ago, uh, I'm in my bathroom and I'm getting ready to do something and I'm putting my makeup on. And all of a sudden I hear my mother say to me, I said I loved you because I loved you, not because you were eating a piece of cantaloupe. But that association had a chemical balance in my brain. Mm -hmm. And that balance would get heightened. Or I would feel that um, energy with that love in the food. So I have to learn, okay, about loving for loving mm -hmm. and not because mm -hmm. I'm doing something with it. So let's go back to a little bit where you were focusing on earlier that the rescuer is coming to rescue the individual and would be able to take them, in essence, to the doorstep of, of the path for them to go down to rescue themselves, in essence. Right. You know, so the, I guess the, the question I have is that, you know, what is the trigger that the person who's being rescued needs to find to get over that threshold? You know? So, in yeah. other words, you're asking me, if I'm asking you to rescue? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. I need to know that you care enough about me to make a choice that is difficult for you, that will make it easier for me to become a responsible person. I have to figure that mm -hmm. out. I have to figure mm -hmm. out that you care. It's not that you don't care. And it's not that, you, and it's for, the, the, for me to know that you can only do so much, you only know so much, okay? And that makes you a perfect human being. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about a perfectionist, but I cannot reach in the supermarket, the third shelf. I'm not tall enough. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I'm working with. That mm -hmm. was, that's my deficit. So yeah. a stranger mm -hmm. will come by and I'll say, excuse me, could you reach that for me? Mm -hmm. So I found a way to work, going to the market and mm -hmm. getting some help. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I didn't ask that person coming down the aisle to lift me mm -hmm. because that's not his job and he couldn't do it anyway to get something. So I have to know how to ask for help, mm -hmm. and I have to accept the choice in which the help is given. I may not like that, but mm -hmm. that's your reality, and that's how you cope. Okay. When we first sat down, uh, before we did the program, um, I was facing differently, right. mm -hmm. and um, I, I have a chronic neck issue, so what I did was I said, I really need to change my position. Mm -hmm. That's not going to put too much stress on my neck. Right. So, and mm -hmm. I said to you, I've learned to live with some of my deficits. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, if we could understand... Now, when they say it's a disease, mm -hmm. let's break that down a little bit and talk about a chemical imbalance. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a disease. But there is a deficit. You know, if you're a diabetic, okay, mm -hmm. you have an issue with your pancreas and your insulin, mm -hmm. and there's kind of a medical term for that. If I walked up to you, I said, you know, how's your stomach, Larry? If I right. knew that, mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't, so I, but I don't walk up to you and say, hey, how's your brain? Right. But that's basically what we're talking about. So there's a chemical imbalance that's happening within the, the, ner the, the neural systems of the brain. Right. You know? that, that associates, yeah. mm -hmm. okay, a lack of emotion, mm -hmm. a lack of trust, a lack mm -hmm. of being comfortable. And so today, sometimes we make our children too comfortable and we fix too many things for them so that when they get to be older and they're in a situ oh, wait, excuse me, they're in a situation where they need to learn coping skills, they don't mm -hmm. have it. Now I'm not blaming parents for that. 
I'm just no because I mean it, all of us as parents ultimately this, you we, know we, we have a protective mechanism to protect our, right. our loved ones you right know. but right. what mm -hmm. what we need to do early intervention with mm -hmm. children is get children I don't care if they're two three ten find a way to help your child learn to cope with stress being uncomfortable and how do you work it out mm -hmm. some people from other lifetimes come without knowing and in this lifetime we teach ourselves and network with other people friends family jobs okay to teach us okay how you work it out mm -hmm. and it's a constant you know, it's not the big issues sometimes in your life. It's the little everyday things. And um, my computer has some kind of issue that I don't know anything about. I've been on the phone with Verizon four days in a row, three hours at a time. But I worked it out. Mm -hmm. I followed directions. I was patient. And it's still not working. Mm -hmm. So I decided not to become a victim <laughs> Mm -hmm. of my computer it's so frustrating so yeah. I had to kind of learn that and I think that um, you didn't go back to paper and pen did you no, no. you're still you're still so, working now, you're still now, working now, through now, it right? right but now I'm gonna right. find someone else that'll come and come help me but I had to work out that anxiety of, of not knowing exactly what to do it wasn't the computer it was how am I going to figure this out that's, that's the kind of like the technological advances that are happening today, you know, and... But it, it challenges. It, it, right. It's mm -hmm. a challenge. Right. It's not the computer. Mm -hmm. It's something that is disruptive to you. That's frustrating. And what do you do about that? So when a life problem comes, when a relationship problem comes, when a job issue comes, when you're in school and you have all these peer pressures, okay, what is it? that you need to learn and if we could take a step back and say okay how do I deal with this mm -hmm. so I mean in the middle of a moment of argument okay we we can't be prepared in what we're going to say to each other but we can be prepared in how confident we are in our conversation mm -hmm. and that what you might say to me I cannot take personally unless you ask me a question and I'm not going to defend myself but I'm going to tell you where I'm coming from that's a whole different yeah. mm -hmm. presentation mm -hmm. so it's not an attack I don't have to get anxious mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with my presentation mm -hmm. I may just take a moment to try to explain or teach. Now, because I explain myself to you, doesn't mean that you're going to like it. You're going to accept it. Or you're going to get yeah, it. Mm -hmm. But it's not mm -hmm. a hostile um, feeling. Mm -hmm. It's, if you can teach me something. It's a feeling of a confidence that you have within yourself. Right. That, you know, uh, whether it may be the difference between right and wrong, you know, or it just is a belief that you have. Uh, you mentioned peer pressure earlier in, in your conversation, you know. That's kind of one of the issues that, you know, we find, you know, that the, addict, the addicted person, you know, got started because of peer pressure. Right. But, it, but they weren't, I guess, balanced enough to think it through. But you can take that, it. Larry, you can take that yeah. one step further, mm -hmm. okay, and look at the bullying peer pressure. The bullying, yes, okay, absolutely. Okay, and mm -hmm. with all the electronics and the texting, okay, everything is so out of control because people aren't taking the time, they're not thinking about other ways to accomplish things. Um, sometimes there's too many choices so you don't make any. There's an, there is... Well, somebody once said not to decide is, is to a, decide. Is, exactly. That's <laughs> right, a choice. Yeah, right. And mm -hmm. I think that we have, we have a lot of people talking about a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm hoping that myself and the program that you're carrying here today gives people some steps 
We need direction. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how to do that, but what I explained very simply is we cannot rescue people the way they want us to be rescued. So in a confident way, I'm saying to you, it's okay if you want to rescue somebody, but the choice in the rescuing is the lesson. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was very powerful. Yes, it was. Very well put. Mm -hmm. And the person that's asking for help has to ask for help and receive it not the way he wants it, but the way it's going to work for him. To improve them, right. right. That, that, that is even more profound because you can ask for help, but if you're not willing to accept the help to better yourself, and you know yeah, something? Then, you know, you, you'll, the ha that help will never come. That's yeah, right. And mind. the thing is, I think more people would get help and things would progress a little bit if we helped the person asking for help mm -hmm. without the condescending, without mm -hmm. you're a drug addict, um, w without that society pressure. With, without that feeling less than. Mm -hmm. And it's not what you say to somebody, it's really how you say it. So if we can continue, listen, I'm not telling you not to be angry and I'm not telling you not to be frustrated, but I'm trying to explain to you that when someone is in pain, mm -hmm. it's the kindness, the softness, the patience and the trust that comes with helping someone to rescue themselves. Mm -hmm. And if we can, you know, if, if, if a child... So let me, let me, let okay. me stop there for a second yep. and, and talk about the rescuer, in the case, let's call it the parent, yep. okay? And, the, and whether the addict keeps coming to the parent and asking for that help to rescue them, and the parent believes that they're doing as much as they can... Of course. But the, the person we asking for the rescue doesn't want to accept the, the the methods that you know the parent believes is the right way. Right. So how do we then rescue that parent? Okay. Because now that parent feels like they failed, or they're continuing to fail each time the the person is asking to be rescued. Okay. You know, someone is coming to you because they need to be rescued. Yeah. And you're saying to that person, "I am here for you." I want to help you, but this is what I know. Mm -hmm. I may not know everything, but I will try to find out something that will help you. Mm -hmm. And it may not be exactly what you want, but I'm going to give you a choice, okay, that is in your best interest mm -hmm. because you, we are not lawyers, doctors, not... Right. Everyone mm -hmm. cannot be a psychiatrist, mm -hmm. a social worker, a mental health worker, mm -hmm. okay? You have brought with you a set of function, coping, love, mm -hmm. caring, compassion, okay? All these things that need to heal yourself and someone else. Mm -hmm. So you have what you need, but you have to be realistic and say, I do not have what you need. I can send you, I can help you find through this, this, and this what you need. Mm -hmm. And if you think you can do that, I will help you do that. And if not, I will be here when you're ready. But until then, this is all I can do mm -hmm. for now. And so that, that takes off why didn't I know this? And why didn't I say that? And why didn't I do this? Because that's not your job. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a lawyer, I'm, I'm not going to go to you to ask you to take out my appendix. You don't know how to do right. that. Mm -hmm. I'm a parent. I have certain skills. We are all doing the best that we can. This is how I know how to help you. If that's not working, then what do you need to do because this is your mm -hmm. responsibility. Mm -hmm. What is your choice? 
Because they've made these choices. Absolutely. Like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. they've gotten them and in. they're good manipulators. Mm -hmm. You know, they're good. They're very good manipulators. Mm -hmm. So don't think that they don't know. Mm -hmm. But it all boils down to fear, being imprisoned in their own minds. And it's not that they really want to be an addict, mm -hmm. but if we can help them understand that they have a coping skill, yep. but if they don't use it, they don't know they have it, mm -hmm. and they don't know what they can do. I'll help you find it. I'll help you find your coping skills. Mm -hmm. You have them. You brought them with you. They're just in a circuit in your brain that you need to plug into. Mm -hmm. There you go. So when we kind of paint a picture of, you know, the rescue, the rescuer being the parent, trying to rescue the, the loved one that they have, and the loved one chooses not to be rescued, the circuit isn't triggering for them to understand, you know, what ways are available. And in essence, it, it goes back to what we hear in the, the kite will learn to cope. The attic isn't going to be able to, to, we're not going to be able to rescue the attic until the attic wants to rescue him himself. Right. I essence, believe yeah. very strongly yeah. that for some, there is an event that changes their life mm -hmm. or a person that will come into their lives that they may not have met yet mm -hmm. that will help them open that circuit and will give them what they need. That's that spiritual networking. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a, parent that died, okay? Yep. Please help my son get here. Please help my daughter meet the right person mm -hmm. at the right time. So there is an abundance of unseen networking mm -hmm. that you as a parent or a person that needs to be rescued can call upon and ask. I remember I was, I had a car accident. I was very ill, long story, I was desperate and I needed help, and my grandfather came to me, who's been dead for 20 years, mm -hmm. said to me, I'll help you. And I went, thank you, and that's how I sit here today, mm -hmm. because I accepted that higher power. Mm -hmm. And you never know when it comes, and you never know in the form. Mm -hmm. So as a parent or a rescuer, do not think that all is lost. And what will help you cope, okay, is to say, there's an angel, my father in the spirit world is watching, I'm asking for that higher power, that help, okay? And if you just put some trust in that. And the other reality is, for some, there are some people who came to learn not to recover, mm -hmm. and they will bring that into another lifetime. Mm -hmm. You know, people die of illnesses, we all going to die eventually. Right. right. Mm -hmm. But I think that learning your purpose, learning okay. what your lesson mm -hmm. is. Okay. Believe it or not, we're at the end of our program. I see that. <laughs> this well, has been incredible. <laughs> well, I want to Thanks. thank you for coming in Thanks. My and sharing pleasure. some of the spirituality aspects behind it. Thanks. And on behalf of all of us here at A Deadly Silence, I want to thank you for watching us and hope to see you in our next episode. Thank you. And good day.